Hello everyone, welcome to another video on the channel and welcome to a video where I am going to show you how to do one little setup change and almost completely fix the Group 3 MR cars. Now the reason for this video was because I did a live stream maybe about a week ago, 10 days ago, it was the Daily Race C Group 3 cars at the Nürburgring GP. Now we'd had a pretty good stream to be fair. Uh, we've been using the Genesis, the Corvette, the Mustang, Basically very stable FR cars, we picked up a couple of wins, a couple of podiums along the way and I thought, you know what, let's finish the stream by jumping in to the notorious Ferrari 458 and all its handling quirks that come with it. And a lot of these quirks are pretty much, you know, central to the MR cars in general in this game. So the Ferrari, the Lamborghini, the McLaren, the Audi, they all kind of have some rather severe oversteer moments. I think the Ferrari probably is the worst and be honest with you, jumping into the Ferrari having just done two and a half hours in FR cars and getting used to how those cars drive was not going to be a good idea. And we had moment after moment, oversteering moment after oversteering moment. The Ferrari also has a very strange kind of understeer element to it as well out of the slow corners. And yeah, we went from P2, somehow managed to stay in P2 for one and a half laps before we went backwards in rather spectacular fashion. Ended up making a pit stop just to get some new tyres. Finished over a minute and 10 seconds behind the winner. Uh, in last place completely. And yeah, it was a very, very, very painful experience. But it did get me thinking, you know, is there something in the short term, short term that we can very quickly fix or change on these MR cars to make them more drivable? And I think I have discovered that. And to sort of demonstrate how dramatically this one single setup change to the MR cars uh, transforms their handling and their ability to do good laps. I have done a back-to-back -back race session at this week's Deal Race B. So this week's Deal Race B is uh, Group 3 cars at Circuit de Catalunya in Barcelona. It's not an actual Deal Race B, it's basically a custom race set up exactly the same as Deal Race B. So we're on the racing hard tyres, tyre wear at times one, Fuel at times one, six laps, BOP on, etc. Uh, you can change the setup in a custom race, so it does allow us to change that one setting and then kind of do the, the back to back. And yeah, I think you'll be quite surprised at the results. But we're on the, the run here where we are basically running the default setup before we've made any changes, obviously with BOP. And we have had quite a torrid time to be fair. Uh, now, I haven't actually done any Daily Race B this week, but I have watched a few on streams. So I know a kind of competitive lap time for maybe a driver of my ability would be a sort of low 1 minute 47, maybe a high 1 minute 46. For most Group 3 cars, you know, obviously I know the Beetle and certain other cars are a little bit quicker. But I think they, in general, that's the sort of lap times a Group 3 car should be doing. Now, you've probably seen a few examples of just what the Ferrari has been doing to me in these lap times. We have been having oversteer moments, understeering moments, and yeah, pretty much similar to what the car was doing at the Nürburgring. And that does reflect in the lap times. Our base lap times are 148.9, but generally in the low one minute 49. So a good two seconds off the sort of pace that we've kind of put it in the same kind of ballpark figure as the other half decent group three cars. And in terms of finishing time, we have done a 10 minutes 56. Now, we'll jump into the car settings immediately after doing that race. And what you can see here is the default setup. If you don't believe me, go and check the default BOP setup and you'll see that everything is exactly as it should be there. Now, the one set we're going to go in and change is the initial torque. Now, if we read through the text, it does kind of make sense that the changes that this makes to the handling would be basically what it says on the tin. That last line in particular, it goes, the higher the setting, the less likely unexpected changes in handling are to occur, but the more likely you are to experience understeer. Now, that's exactly the problem we've got in the Ferrari. We are getting big unexpected handling changes. The car just dramatically goes into oversteer moments. So that's set at 15, which is pretty low. It says, the higher the setting, the less likely we are to get these uh, unexpected handling changes. So I'm going to put it all the way up to 60 and we're going to go back out and do another run. And I think you're going to be somewhat amazed at the results this single little change does to the handling on the Ferrari. Now, it doesn't completely get rid of that oversteer. What it does is that oversteer comes in much more gradually, gradually 
much more predictable and allows you to actually use the oversteer to kind of rotate the car. Now again, it does say on the tin as well when we change the initial torque settings that we'll get a little bit of more understeer and that is definitely the case. But I would much rather deal with a little bit of understeer and predictable oversteer than just completely wild oversteer where you've got no idea what the back end of the car is doing or when it's about to do it. And yeah, honestly, that one little set has completely transformed the handling of this Ferrari. I can go in to the corners with so much more confidence. I can throw it in with much more speed. Confident that the back end is not just going to go a 45 degree angle. You may get a little bit of slip angle from it, but it's much more gradual. It's much more... I don't know what the word I'm looking for is. There is a word that kind of aptly describes the way the kind of the oversteer comes on. Now coming into turn 8 there, I think, is it Capsa? We went into that corner far too quick, that's why we got a big oversteer moment. But again, the way the oversteer came in, with the initial torque set at 60 compared to 15, was much more predictable. I could feel it coming on and much easier to catch the car. Had we done that with the initial setting at 15, that car would have been round facing backwards. There's no way we would have saved that. I'm 99.9% .9 certain of that. But coming into the end of lap 1 here, you can see the car has behaved generally pretty well throughout that lap and yeah just a much more pleasant car to drive the understeer is a little bit annoying and i can imagine that a lot of people maybe complain about the understeer that this kind of setup induces but as you're about to see as we sort of jump here to lap number six the lap times uh, tell their own story so we're down into the low 147s fairly comfortably uh, not the most consistent run we've ever done there being kind of half a second between laps is not what I would call super consistent. It's not too bad, but the potential of the car is definitely there to be seen. We're on for a fastest lap as well on the last lap here. So potentially going to get into the 146s. I actually think we finished with a 147 flat. But yeah, the car completely transformed. You can just have much more confidence in it. You don't even need to go as high as 60 on the initial torque either. I did a test run with it on 40 and found that the car was still much easier to drive than when it was on 15. A little bit looser on the rear end as you would expect, but certainly nothing dramatic in the oversteering moments like you get when it's on 15. So yeah, coming to the end of this run now, car has been absolutely transformed. We finished with a 147.0, absolutely within that competitive ballpark figure that the other cars are doing. And our finishing time was actually 12 seconds faster than the first run. So. Yeah, I can't believe just what a difference that made to the car. That one little setting has completely changed the, the handling of these cars and has made these marquee brands like Ferrari, Lamborghini and Audi, you know, and others, you know, the 4GT, the new 4GT in the game, made them so much more drivable. And the question you have to ask yourself is, why are PD not doing something like this? If me in my bedroom, messing about, can basically discover this little change to make these cars more drivable. Why aren't PDE making these cars more drivable? In the short term, you know, I'm, I'm going to guess they are working in a fix for these cars, but in the short term, they could just change the default setting to something like 50 or 55, make these cars a lot more drivable for the average player, and then you maybe start seeing them appearing in daily races. Because you don't see anybody racing these in the daily races, they do occasionally pop up in the time trial times, because I guess if you can get used to the handling, you can use that rotation that you get and maybe just sort of pull a lap out of nowhere, but you can't get any consistency in these cars. And I'm going to imagine that's probably the case for even the top players. They can pull a lap out of these cars, but they can't get any consistency, which is why we never see them in any races. So let me know what you think if you give this a try. I do urge you to go and do some laps in the Ferrari with its default bop set up. Do some drifting around some corners, change that initial torque and go back out and be amazed at the, the change it makes to these cars. Anyways, if you do give it a try, let me know in the comments below how you get on. And if you've liked the video, please hit that like button, please hit that subscribe button. Thank you very much for watching, I'll catch you on the next one. Goodbye now.